Hey everyone, welcome to Play Noggin. I'm Julian, your Brains Player 2. Today we're paying a visit to one of our oldest and dearest friends to better understand how he does the incredible things he does. Super Mario, or just Mario to his friends, is perhaps one of the most recognizable icons in the entertainment industry. He has delighted millions of fans for decades with his escapades in the Mushroom Kingdom, saving Princess Peach from a giant spiky turtle who can't take a hint. While he's gained a lot of superpowers over the years, from flying to fireballs to turning into whatever this thing is, there have been a couple of constants that make Mario who he is. That's right, we're talking about jumping high and breaking bricks. As you probably know, Mario's jumping prowess is so fundamental to his character that his original name back in 1981's Donkey Kong was Jumpman. He leaps several times higher than his own height. How is that possible? One theory is that Mario lives on another planet, one with much weaker gravity than Earth. That would allow him to jump significantly higher than you or me. On the moon, for example, you could jump six times higher than you could here. But that theory doesn't hold up for one simple reason. If Mario's jumping ability was based on weaker gravity, then not only would he jump higher, but he would fall slower. And aside from those times when he's wearing a magical cape, that's just not the case for Mario at all. First, a quick primer on acceleration due to gravity. When you jump, you lose speed at a rate of 9.8 meters per second squared, as gravity resists your attempts to leave its loving embrace. When you fall, you gain speed at a rate of 9.8 meters per second squared. For the first second, you're moving at 9.8 meters per second. By the next second, you're falling at 19.6 meters per second, and so on. According to the internet, Mario is 1.55 meters tall. In Super Mario World, he jumps a little more than twice his own height, and it takes him just over a quarter of a second to fall back down. With a rate of descent like that, it means whatever planet Mario lives on, it has eight times the gravity of Earth. So, to jump that high, Mario must be some sort of alien with monstrously powerful legs. If Mario were a normal human, not only would his legs splinter like toothpicks on landing, the G-Force alone would be enough to make him lose consciousness immediately, if not kill him outright. Hopefully, he's stocked up on extra lives. Okay, so Mario has both the superhuman ability to jump and to somehow make overalls look cool. But what about his brick-breaking ability? Sure, we've all seen martial arts experts take wax at stacks of bricks and send them crumbling, but there's always wind-up and meditation before the strike. Mario breaks bricks like brick-breaking is going out of style. Quick side note, we're operating under the assumption that Mario is breaking bricks with his hand, not his head. Look, you see here? He's got his arm extended. We consider that canon. Anyway, moving on. How does brick-breaking work? A martial artist's hand may reach speeds of 24 miles per hour as they move the strike, and a hand moving at that speed generates around 675 pounds of force. Concentrated in a single spot on a pile of bricks, that's enough to do some serious damage. Now, we already know that Mario is a powerful jumper. He's also apparently a skilled martial artist as well, and if his arms are as superhuman as his legs, then it's not surprising Mario crumbles those bricks the way he does. Mario has a takeoff speed of approximately 50 miles per hour, that's more than twice as fast as a martial artist brick breaker. And even though he's stopped moving upwards at the height of his jump, he can still throw a fist up and crumble some blocks. So what about his hand? Why doesn't it shatter with the force of so many brick punches? As it turns out, bone is pretty dang strong. A cubic inch of bone can handle about 19,000 pounds of weight, which is four times more than concrete can handle. Not only that, but your muscle and tendons work hard to provide cushioning for your bones and to dispense the force being exerted on them. That means if you can buy the idea that Mario is a superhuman jumping machine capable of withstanding G-forces eight times that of Earth, then it's not a stretch to believe he's a bona fide brick wrecking machine, too. Now, none of this explains why Princess Peach can float, but that's a question for someone else to tackle. Hey, thanks for watching. If your love of science is matched by your love of games, you're in the right place. Click here to subscribe and check back every week for more scientific insights in your favorite games. If you have any questions, drop us a comment below, and don't forget to keep on playing.